Hello everybody, I'm Jay Lynn and welcome to episode 8 of my Minecraft survival world. Today we're going from this to this. Finally getting to putting my animal sanctuary together I've talked so much about. And yeah, when I built this barn I was planning on having two stories with a floor at the stone line here with a sheep farm above, but I decided it would be more fun to just use this whole thing and make it a cool environment for a bunch of different animals. So we're going to start by making a nice big blue sky, which is going to take a lot of wool. So go ahead and get started on that grind. You might think it's funny that I plan on building a sheep farm and really soon yet i'm out here doing this but really it's the best way to go it, it would take a long time to build the farm and even longer for it to produce enough wool to do what i want to do so it's just kind of the better route to go old school sacrifice some wheat to Help the babies grow. And yeah, this is going to be a lot of work. In hindsight, I w if I would have known when I was building it, I would have put the sky up there first. But again, I had no idea I was planning on doing this at the time. But for future reference, I will be doing that. had to go out many times and get a bunch more blue wool. Don't worry, I won't be showing you every trip, but just know it was a big grind. Cover up the walls as well. I'm gonna be doing it all eventually. I'm just gonna kinda get this top layer for now and we'll fill in the rest later. But again, it was a lot of wool. At this point, I could see the potential already. I, I've done a project like this before on a much smaller scale. This ended up being a whole different animal, but really probably one of the more fun projects I've ever done getting some clouds in really makes a difference on the sky. Of course, I had to get a lot of white wool for that. get this dirt scaffolding out of the way to get a feel for how it's really looking and I'm thinking it's looking pretty awesome at this point. It's got me excited. And yeah, well, I'm gonna, around the outside, I'm gonna build some little hills and mountains best I can and on a very small scale, trying to not come out too deep from the wall because I don't want to take up too much space, but just kind of get some miniature mountains for the background. I try my best to leave the windows just to get some natural light in and stuff. I do take away the ones in the corner just because they were difficult, but I think it was cool to leave the windows. I was debating getting rid of them, but I like having the natural light. Bring in a little dirt so they're not just stone blobs here. The hills are going to take a lot of work. But you can kind of see the concept. It'll look a lot better when I get the sky behind it like this. You can see the idea. I'll wrap those all the way around on this side and do kind of a desert and a swamp on this side, but break, to break up the monotony after all that wool placing, I'm going to take a little adventure here, get a few things I'm going to need. Go back to the house and grab a brush because my first mission is to find another sniff rig 
make sure I have enough food. And I'm off to the north, like the trip I've made many times. Once again, we're at this area, and I think I've decided what I'm going to do here is turn this little valley into a big farming area with farming villagers and just giant fields of different types. Nice flat land, I think it would be cool. This trip feels longer and longer every time I take it. I didn't come prepared with wood, so I had to fend for myself there. Get a boat made to get into the water here. Made this little canal last time I was out here. Now we're at the giant coral reef. I'm going to go way north to areas I haven't explored yet of the warm ocean, hoping to find an ocean ruin. Do come across this shipwreck. Gets me sidetracked for a little bit. Find this treasure map. But I did not have any luck. I dug all around in the water, above the water. Looking at the map, you might be telling me to move forward, but that's all the place I just dug out in the ocean. I just don't understand where this thing could possibly be. I dug all the way down to sandstone, so I gave up. I do that sometimes. Got lots of sand out of it, though. Not a complete loss. Just keep traveling north. Find this little village up here. Take a nap. Go see what it has. Find a blacksmith, which had a couple diamonds and iron, which was nice. I found another one, which had a saddle, which is nice because I know of a camel on the way home. And once again, just exploring the ocean. And I was really having trouble finding ocean ruins. I don't know how long I was out here, but it might have been an hour plus. I was not having any luck. And then finally at nighttime, I end up finding one here. But I did not find any suspicious gravel. Even after all the work of killing the ground. Looked all over the place. So it's becoming a theme that I give up again. Hate to be that guy, but... I was just not having any luck finding ocean ruins and decided to head home. So I picked up that camel and started the trek. Unfortunately, no sniffer today, but at least we have the one egg we found in episode three, I believe. Nice to have our camel couple now. Now I'm going to head out to the west because I need some snow and some blue ice. Those are my main mission pieces here. But I do end up back at the jungle here, which I haven't been here in a while. And kind of came up with what my plan is for at least the starter base is we've got our, our main base out this direction, about 770 blocks this way exactly. So we're going to have a road coming all the way out here with a nice big bridge across the water here. And then I'm gonna build my starter base up on these rocks so that you can really see it from a distance and it connects the area and you'll be able to see it from all angles. So that's gonna be fun, but might be a while before I get there. While I'm out here, I get a bunch of iron and coal, might as well. Back on the mission. Such a cool area out here though. But I'm trying to not get sidetracked. Gotta climb this mountain.
I don't want to just deface the mountain and make it look all ugly, so I try to come kind of in the middle of it where I'm not taking stuff that's visible from the view outside. I do get a bunch of blue eyes here, good amount of snow. be more than I need and on the way back I kind of take this route I'd never taken before see if I can find the thing cool but there wasn't much to be found but I made it home gonna get back to work in here and yeah I'm gonna do the biggest mountain of them all on this side and then over here kind of do a little desert and a little swamp in the corner here just kind of differentiate the area a little bit but for this side we're just going in biggest mountain I can make I'm from the Pacific Northwest so I would say it's kind of Mount Rainier inspired for what I could do in the space I had. Just going around, kind of drawing an outline of all the hills I want to make. that the entrances are mainly just to cover up all the yellow from the barn door on the outside. Keep the things separate. And they make for kind of cool entrances. Again, I'm trying to keep my windows here, which was a challenge with this big mountain. But in the end, I thought it was actually ended up being kind of cool, almost like little caves and tunnels. Definitely a little bit bigger. It'll look cooler when I get some more details added, but the shape is there. I have moved my little work section into this little hidey area so that it's not in the way of everything. Now we're gonna put a little desert in on this side and a swamp. Ends up being kind of flat on this side, but I still think it works out. I do like the hills better, but give some variety to the area. Figured I'd go ahead and get these sheep out of there, give me more room to work. They kept getting in my way. Start extending some of the hills and mountains a little bit, try to make things a little bigger, blend them into the sky there. Just working on shape and scale. And then this is the only hill I'm gonna put any blue ice on, kind of treating it like glaciers. Make it stand out a little bit from the rest. getting some snow added on which I'll put snow on kind of the tops of all the hills there but this one gets the most differentiated
slowly but surely these are starting to look a little more like mountains if you use your imagination and it'll look a lot better when I get the sky put in here yeah it makes a big difference here at this point I go ahead and decide to finish the sky for the rest of the building now that I got my basic shapes down and let me reiterate that that was a lot of wool but well worth it. I'm liking the vibe. We're starting to get created in here. Definitely its own little world going on. It's only going to get better. We'll put some clouds in over there, but I want to do some more building first to make sure I don't want to do anything different. I start to clear out some areas of the sky, trying to make some kind of mountains in the distance in the background I go with some dark blue terracotta thinking that I pictured like when you're looking at mountains far away kind of a dark purple or blue definitely more purple than I realized there when I was making it cut another one out here and put it in and then at this point I decided it's a little bit too purple so I went ahead and swapped them out with some gray I think it looks a lot better now we go around and create these little miniature trees on the mountains just to give them a little more life and it also creates scale when I start adding things in the middle section there it's gonna kind of make the mountains look like they're a little more at a distance in relation to everything else I think they're looking pretty cool put some work into the swamp area here Get another little water feature over on this side here I like my water features and waterfalls. Get a nice winding path going through the middle. A nice curve to it, adding some shape to the area. Now we're going to get going on some trees, the smallest of which is going to be a little mangrove tree in the swamp here. wasn't really happy with the shape so I put a little extension on this side here I think it ended up coming together pretty decently nice little mangrove tree do a little fine tuning get some vines added so that they grow and that'll really make it look swampy Now on this side, I'm going to do a, more of a spruce tree. These are always fun to build. Stem some branches out using some dark oak to match the spruce wood pretty good. And then I pretty much just cover all the fences with leaves from all sides best I can and that creates a certain shape and usually works out pretty good.
and I was actually pretty happy with it from my first look here. But now for the big boy, big oak tree. Kind of wanted something kind of hanging over everything and this is my favorite kind of tree to build. Nice roof of leaves. We just work our way up here and then I just extend branches out kind of in a circular shape around the top best I can. This one I'm not quite as worried about the top itself since I'm never going to be like flying over it or anything so I'm mainly just worried about how it looks from the bottom. But same as the spruce tree I go around and add little branches using some spruce fences to match the oak wood better and then just go around with the leaves again and cover them up best I can. I do the top first and I cover all the wood up top so nothing's spawnable. Yeah, as far as the height and the shape, I'm liking it. Definitely still some work to do. Lots of work to do on this trunk. Gotta make the trunk look a lot better. I think that looks a little better, a little more natural curve. And I knew I was going to need a bunch more oak leaves to finish it. So I go in and create a nice little dirt scaffold well below the tree so that I can reach up and bring the leaves down to me and get a little bit of a hanging leaves effect going on, which I always think looks good. It makes a big difference. looking pretty good. I saw this little blank space so I just went and filled it up and at this point I got rid of the scaffolding and I'm pretty happy with the tree here. I'm getting better at my tree building. This is definitely the fastest I've ever built a tree like this so pretty pleased with myself and I was liking how it was looking so now we're gonna start detailing the area a little bit. Bring a little more life. I'm just using these as kind of fake cactus for now because I don't want the cactus injuring the animals in here. Big fan of the grass, always bring some life in, get some tall ferns and a couple patches of allium flowers here. Go ahead and put some clouds in on the desert side now that I've decided I'm not going to do anything else different. some coarse dirt to break up the path a little bit. <laughs> and I'm really happy with how things are looking here. Definitely got our own little world created in here. I think it's really cool. Probably, I know I've said this before, I think this is one of my favorite projects I've ever built. Now we're just going to need to add some animals, so I'll go ahead and steal the one sniffer egg I found many episodes ago, and I was hoping to save it, but the fact they're so hard to find, I'm going to go ahead and use this guy here, so we'll get him hatching slowly. And I've got my pairs of animals over here that I've had from the beginning. Create a little wall to separate the rest of the cows and then I bring these guys on over. The sheep weren't wanting to come in but I finagled them in. Go ahead and get the pigs. And the chickens. And yeah, the life coming in. I'm really liking it. But I wanted a few more animals, so 
gonna head out towards the lush cave knowing that I'll find some axolotls in there. Found this little pair hanging out. Feel kind of bad taking them from the baby here, but gotta do what you gotta do. Happened to have some seeds on me, so I befriend this bird on the way back. And get some bamboo and start bringing this panda home. And I've never brought a panda home. I don't know if they're always this slow or if it's just this kind of panda. But man, it was slow. But I almost kind of like it. it. Gives the panda a cool little personality. And it was a trek to get them home, but well worth it. We got lots of animals going on in here at this point. Maybe even almost too many, so I'm not gonna add much more, but I think it is cool having all the life. And I was actually away from the screen the second the sniffer hatched. I was kind of disappointed, but I came back and I think this is a really cool mod to add to the game. Then, then it grows into this, which is crazy. The thing's huge. I don't even know if I'm gonna have room for two of these guys in here. A couple finishing touches on the area. Swap this out for some moss. I think that makes a better fake cactus. Get a few of these cherry blossom flowers around. Add a little pink. And at this point, I was really happy with how things have come together here. Thought I'd take a step out here so you can kind of see what it's like going from the outside regular Minecraft world. Then you step into here and it's kind of like going into a different dimension and I'm really liking it. Animals seem nice and happy like the trees I've made. You can see what I was saying about now that we've got the big trees in here. It makes the mountains look like they're a little further away. And the adding the small trees on the mountains really does a lot to create that depth there, I think. But yeah, got a nice spot created for the animals. I realized in editing that I lost the clip of me naming the camels. So thanks to some suggestions, we've got Ralph... And Camila. I like both names. Thank you guys for that. And as far as the other names go, I don't have any name tags, but I had a stuffed animal cow when I was a kid named Mr. Moo. So we're going Mr. Moo and Mrs. Moo. And I'm just going to go along with that theme. So we're going to have Mr. Ba and Mrs. Ba for the sheep. Mr. and Mrs. Oink for the pigs. And Mr. and Mrs. Bach for the chickens. I think it's kind of fun names. But I'm open to suggestions on naming the axolotls here. The bird. I had a pet bird when I was a kid. Cockatiel looked just like this guy. We're going to name him Sweetie. But yeah, if you guys got name ideas for the axolotls. And the sniffer here. I would definitely be happy to take them. As well as the panda. I don't have anything necessarily in mind for that, so give me your ideas. And yeah, so with that, we're going to call it an episode here. And I just really got to thank you all once again. Just a, a little over a week ago, I was thanking you for getting me to 100 subscribers, and now we're at 233, which I don't even know what to say. That's amazing. I really appreciate you guys. I'm having so much fun, and you all have been super nice and just really making this an awesome experience for me. So thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. I'm humbled. And yeah, with that, I hope to be back soon. Thanks for coming, and have a good day.